Hey guys, Andy here. We're taking a look at some of the shots I've taken on the Nexus 6 uh, today. Quite often the Nexus devices haven't excelled in the camera department, but I was quite interested to see a lot of people saying that this one uh, has kind of broken that rule and actually has a very good camera. So let's take a look at some of the photos I've taken. I'll try and show you some from a variety of different uh, scenarios. Um, the first one here, nice bright day. Although an interesting picture because we've got all that shadow in the foreground um, across most of the grass, but actually it exposed it quite well. This is not HDR, and these are regular photos, uh, regular mode. But the detail looks pretty good in the uh, the greenery and the bushes and the tree at the side and the trees at the back. Uh, quite a clear sky actually, so there's no no we can't look to see how the clouds do. And then if we move on, I've basically I've cropped it to 1920 by 1080. So if you're watching in the 1080 mode, this is sort of pixel for pixel how it would look um, and again I think the detail looks pretty good there the colors look pretty good possibly possibly you might say it's slightly underexposed up at the top but then like I said they did a good job to to get some detail in the shadow at the front if we move on to the next picture this is actually a sort of relatively low light this is in Brent Cross car park at sort of half seven in the morning as you can see the street lights are on um, there is a bit of cloud in the sky I love the color of the sky at the back there and again generally the detail uh, is pretty good if we go to the crop version uh, this you can see it's a little it's a little grainy in some of the darker areas it's obviously had to up the ISO settings to take this picture but all around I would say is pretty good the next one we go in a bit darker still you can see the moon up in the in the sky there but I was quite impressed with the uh, with how it coped with that one there's a, a light obviously a street light there on the left hand side that it's dealt with reasonably well uh, and it has managed to expose it uh, quite well it is a bit grainy in the darker areas, but all around, that's a, I think that's quite a good shot for the, the low light. And here we have sort of facing the other way. Um, you can see the sky lightening us as it gets into the distance. I think that's a lovely picture myself. Um, pretty good detail all around. Did a good job of exposing it. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite impressed by that. We see the cropped version, and it still looks pretty good. Uh, no real issues with that. A little, a little fuzzy on the left-hand side trees, maybe, but all around that's quite good, I would say. So here's another one. This is this is late night. It is dark, but it's of a lighter subject within the dark. Um, I think the colours look pretty good on that. Uh, again, a good photo. I think that's quite impressive. This is one using the flash of one of my uh, one of my plants in my room. Pretty good. If we look at the crop, you can see kind of there is obviously shadow. And it does make it almost look like you see in two or three images. If you look at the sort of leaf in the middle there, the tip, there's two shadows either side of it, which seems a bit odd, actually. I'm not sure how... Uh, well, I suppose there is a dual flash on it. But, I mean, that's a good picture, though. Good good colour balance, I would suggest. Good white balance. Good detail. Then we move on to a, a nice splash of colour, some flowers. I'll be honest, this one might be HDR. I can't remember. I took two pictures. One of them was slightly blurry. I think I must have moved in at the time. And this was the sharper one, so it's the one I've included. It might be HDR, but I don't think really HDR had much to do in this photo, if it was. It might be standard. But I think those are good colours. Nice bright reds, oranges, yellows. Good detail. Um, yep, good photo. So now I'm trying to, I'm moving on to sort of the macro shot. I could not get it to focus on this little sort of twiggy, leafy, branchy bit. Um, as you can see, actually, the, the background, and you know, I was tapping on a leaf part, but obviously that's not, it wasn't big enough for the camera to focus on, and it focused on the ground behind. But then I have got a macro shot. I can only have been about maybe two inches away from these when I took the picture. It had no problem focusing on them, focused on them nice and quick. And if we move to the crop version, um, I would say the detail generally is pretty good there. Uh, it's a little fuzzy perhaps but that, I would say that's a good that's a good shot then the next one um, just to sort of I suppose try and test the depth of field and the selective focus and aperture uh, and exposure so I tapped obviously on what was what was looking the darker element being the sort of bit of bush and you can see obviously the background is wildly overexposed but that's to be expected I don't think there's many phone cameras that would have uh, exposed the back better than that to be honest and I do like the depth of field effect you get in that shot Finally, we've got a, a couple of selfies coming up. So this is the front-facing camera. This isn't cropped, but this is 1920 by 1080. So this is kind of pixel for pixel, and that's how it is from from the camera. Um, it was quite a bright morning, so the bike is slightly overexposed, I guess. But I would suggest most of me, I mean, the left side of my helmet is maybe a little overexposed. It was a very bright sun. 
Um, I would say generally that's a that's a good picture. I like the strong red colours in the helmet and my jacket. Um, and then we move on to my handsome self. Uh, this is an indoor one, so the low it's relatively low light, uh, and you can see it is a bit grainy in that instance. Um, but I mean that's it's generally sufficient. You see a lot worse people posting pictures on Instagram and such. All in all, that's uh, that that's not a bad picture at all. We're going to move on then to HDR plus mode. So the first one is the bike in good light. So we just saw the selfie version of it. Um, I think that's a fantastic picture. I love the colours. I think it's all well exposed. It's, it's focused well, obviously, as you would expect. Um, really nice picture. If we look at the HDR plus version, not particularly different. I mean, there's not much really to to do with that picture. Actually, the shadows look a little darker, which is odd. Normally, it's the other way around. Um, in fact, I hope I got these pictures the way around. <laughs> but uh, either way, they're, they're very, you know, there's not a great deal to, to decide. It's not a it's not a situation you would instinctively think you need to use HDR because you don't, basically. Uh, much like the second picture as well. So this is, it's indoor, it's in a supermarket. I thought I quite like the, the colours, the silver, black, green, red. Um, this is the regular version. It's slightly, possibly, I think, slightly overexposed. And then we see the HDR version. I don't know if that's a better picture. I think possibly the colours are a bit better and it's, it's slightly darker. Is it a little too dark? I'm not sure. Um, again, not necessarily a situation you would think you would need to use HDR, to be honest. Uh, the next one, on the other hand, we see me looking down the River Brent. This was early in the morning. I think it's probably the same time when you saw that photo earlier in the Brent Cross car park. Um, now, that's not a bad picture. There's, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say there's anything particularly wrong with that, but if we move on to the HDR version, you can just see the, the detail on the left-hand side there in the bushes and sort of the, the colours just seem to pop that a little bit better. Um, the sky is just that slight bit better exposed. Uh, it, it's just it's a much nicer photo. It is, it is slightly false looking, I suppose, when you compare the one to the other, but I would say that's a much better. That's a, I think that's a nice picture. That's a good photo. The, the Nexus 6 has done well to capture that. Then f this is the final one. I think this is the best example of HDR. Um, I went like I was really impressed. This is the st uh, standard photo. I was actually really impressed that it looked as good as this. When I was taking the picture, you could barely see the Argos building at all. It was really dark. Most of the road was very dark. I was thinking all I was really going to get was just a bright sky and then a and then a shadow. But actually, it's a very good photo. So even without HDR, I think the Nexus 6 coped really well with those lighting conditions to expose that picture. If we move on to the HDR Plus, though, <coughs> I think that... Uh, that's the best example of it. I mean, look at the Argos building. It's so clear now. And also, one thing, because obviously HDR takes some multiple photos and it uses the best parts from each photo um, at different exposures to, to give you your final shot. So actually, move items. Those cars there, the two silver cars, were moving, and they're moving quite quick. So, But actually, there's no blur on them at all. They're, you know, they're as if it was just a... Sh a single shot with a high shutter. So I think that's the best example. The sky, the sky still slightly overexposed, but literally the sun is just pointing straight at the camera at this point. And for it to get that detail on the in the buildings and the road signs and the people and the cars, I think is a fantastic job. So is the Nexus 6 the best camera out there at the moment? Probably not. Um, I, I might look at doing a comparison to the Note 4 because Note 4 is regarded as the best smartphone camera by a lot of people and from blind surveys it got picked out so uh, that is generally the the benchmark um, but definitely definitely a very good camera I believe I'd be more than happy if I decide to keep the Nexus 6 that uh, that this is what I'll be getting when I whip it out to, to take a snap let me know your thoughts though in the comments below my name's Andy I'll catch you all again soon